Hi everyone, we are Team 2, made up of Cess Pamela Labit, Lucilia Nicario, Robin Hughes, and Yi Ling Wu. Together we will present our assigned nursing theorist, Patricia Benner. Just to give you a bit of an outline for our presentation here today, we will start with a little bit of history and background on Patricia Benner. We will then discuss Benner's theory from novice to expert, as well as her described domains and competency of nursing practice. We will present you with a case scenario and apply Benner's theoretical framework to this scenario with nursing interventions, client goals, and interventions for each stage in her theory. So to start, here's a little history and background about Patricia Benner. Patricia Benner was born in Hampton, Virginia in 1942 and received her professional nursing education in California. Specifically, she obtained her baccalaureate degree in 1964, then a master's degree in nursing in 1970. Benner gained a wide range of clinical experience in medical, surgical, critical care, and home health care, as well as a large background in research and teaching since 1979. And in 1982, she obtained her PhD from the University of California at Berkeley. Throughout her career, Benner has published nine books and numerous articles, and is most widely known for her development of the theory from novice to expert. Her work has shown influence beyond nursing in areas of clinical practice and clinical ethics. Here's a great visual diagram showing Benner's theory from novice to expert. The various stages shown here will be discussed in further detail later in the presentation. Essentially, Benner introduced the concept that expert nurses develop skills and an understanding of patient care over time through a sound educational base as well as many experiences. She proposed that one could gain knowledge and skills, or the knowing how, without ever learning the theory, or the knowing that, and wrote about nursing skills and experience as a prerequisite for becoming an expert. Benner's five levels of skill acquisition and development are based on the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. These levels reflect movement from a reliance on abstract principles and rules to the use of past concrete experience. These five levels of skill acquisition and development stages that nurses move through as they develop clinical expertise include first, novice, second, advanced beginner, third, competent, fourth, proficient, and the last stage, the expert nurse. The first stage described by Benner is the novice nurse. This nurse has no background experience or professional experience. Um, rules and objectives are given to guide her performance. This level applies to nursing students or nurses with higher levels of skills in a different area of practice that may be placed in an area or situation completely foreign to them. The second stage is known as the advanced beginner. This nurse demonstrates acceptable performance, but is still mostly guided by rules and task completion. Additionally, a nurse at this stage has enough experience to grasp aspects of the situation. The third stage is the competent nurse. This nurse has two to three years of experience in the same area and is more aware of long-term goals and is also able to gain perspective from planning actions. The fourth stage is known as the proficient stage. This nurse has three to five years of experience in the same area and has learned what to expect in certain situations and how to modify plans as needed. In general, the proficient nurse has a more holistic understanding of a situation. And the last stage in Benner's model is known as the expert stage. An expert nurse usually has more than five years of experience and no longer relies on principles, rules, or guidelines to connect situations and determine actions. In addition, the expert nurse is highly proficient, flexible, and intuitive in clinical situations. 
In the following, we are going to discuss banners domains and the competencies of nursing practice. The original domains and the competencies of nursing practice were identified and described inductively from clinical situation interviews and observations of novice and expert staff nurses in actual practice. The study was published in Banner's book, From Novice to Expert, Excellence and the Power in Clinical Nursing Practice. This interpretive phenomenological study used a situational approach to the study of the knowledge and the meanings embedded in the everyday practice of nurses. 31 interpretively defined competencies were identified and described from the narrative data. These competencies were grouped according to similarities of function, intent, and meaning to form seven domains of nurse practice. So the seven domains include the helping role, the teaching coaching function, the diagnostic and patient monitoring function, effective management of rapidly changing situations, administering and monitoring therapeutic interventions and regimens, monitoring and ensuring the quality of healthcare practice. The last one is organizational work role competencies. The helping role domains include the competencies related to establishing a healing relationship, providing comfort measures, and inviting active patients' participation and control in care. There are eight competencies in helping role domain. The teaching and coaching function, including timing, rating patients for learning, motivating changes, assisting with lifestyle alternations, and negotiating agreement on goals are competencies in the teaching and coaching function domain. The diagnostic and the patient monitoring function domain refers to the competencies in ongoing assessment and the anticipation of outcomes. For example, detecting and documenting significant changes in patients' conditions. And the next domain is effective management of rapidly changing situations. And these domains include ability, the ability to continuously uh, match domains with resources and to assess and manage care during crisis situations. The domain administering and monitoring therapeutic interventions and regimens incorporates competencies related to preventing complications during drug therapy, wound management, and hospitalizations. The next domain is monitoring and ensuring the quality of healthcare practice. And this domain includes competencies concerned with maintenance of safety, continuous quality improvement, collaborations and consultation with physicians, self-evaluations and, and, and management of technology. The organizational and work role competencies domain refers to the competencies in priority setting, learn building, coordinating, and providing for continuity of care. Mrs. B, an 82-year-old patient who had a CVA one week ago. Mrs. B has been unstable since admission and has had various complications since the stroke, including increased intracranial pressure, elevated blood pressure, cardiac issues, and metabolic disturbance. She is currently mechanically ventilated and is now expected to recover. The family is now faced with the realities of Mrs. B's inevitable death and the removal of all life support measures. Since Mrs. B's admission, 
There has been active family involvement from her 50-year-old daughter and 48-year-old son. Mrs. B's daughter has been by her mother's bedside every day and has been very anxious and distraught about her mother's condition. Mrs. B's son has also been coming to visit frequently, but lives over an hour away, so is not able to be there as much as he would like. The daughter is often in the room when nurse is giving care to Mrs. B and has expressed interest in being able to participate in helping to care for her mother. At Stroke Uni, there are nurses in different clinical competency stage taking care of Mrs. B. Client goal for Mrs. B. The desired goal for Mrs. B will include maintain stable vital signs and intracranial pressure, maintain fluid and electrolyte balance, involve the family in patient's care, identify resources available for the family to deal with the situation, provide opportunity for family to deal with the situation in their own way. Lucilla. I am the novice nurse. As a novice, I have no experience with the situations in which I am expected to take care of Mrs. B, our CVA patient. I am not capable to use discretionary judgment. I must only use the context-free rules to guide my task performance. Common attributes accessible to me as a novice include uh, checking of Mrs. B's vital signs, measurement of intake and output, and the patient's daily weight um, to monitor vital signs. I will administer medications as ordered. I will administer and monitor therapeutic interventions and regimens. Advanced beginner nurse demonstrates marginally acceptable performance because the nurse has had prior experience in actual situations. He or she is efficient and skillful in parts of the practice area, however, would require occasional supportive cues from other nurses. They may or may not be within a delayed time period because their knowledge is still developing. There are certain nursing actions that an advanced beginner do for Mrs. Brown. These are the following vital signs, respiratory and neurological status monitoring done for the diagnostic and patient monitoring function. Next is watching out for signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. It is also done for the diagnostic and patient monitoring function. Nursing interventions. A nurse, an advanced beginner nurse can do the prevention of pressure ulcers and it is done to administer and monitor therapeutic interventions and regimen. Next is performing actions to promote adequate cerebral venous drainage, such as keeping the head and the neck in a midline or neutral position. It is also done for the implementation of interventions to prevent increase in intracranial pressure. Next is providing emotional support. This is a helping role as categorized in Banner's domains and competencies. In order to provide emotional support, an advanced beginner nurse can assess the level of anxiety present in the family. Since anxiety levels needs to be addressed before the problem solving occurs. Next is establishing rapport and acknowledge difficulty of the situation for the family. Nurses should develop an understanding of the specific disease before meeting with families. Last is determine the family's current knowledge and or perception of the situation. This is done in order to provide information in which to begin planning of care and make informed decisions. According to Benner's competence stage, the nurse is able to demonstrate good planning and organizational abilities with tasks. However, even though the nurse feels confident and comfortable with the technical skills, she is still somewhat resistant to having family members in the room while performing them. 
One nursing intervention for a nurse at this stage would be monitoring Mrs. B's vital signs and intracranial pressure. This would correspond to Benner's competency of diagnostic and patient monitoring function. Understanding the demands of Mrs. B's condition is essential in anticipating her care needs, and nurses at this competent stage are able to do this very well. The competent stage nurse is more aware of the long-term goals and will be better able to facilitate these for the patient and family members. Although having said this, the competent nurse may tend to lack the ability to recognize situations in terms of an overall picture that the proficient and expert nurses can. Another nursing intervention for a nurse at this stage might be to organize a family meeting to discuss long-term goals regarding palliative care and advanced directives. According to Benner, this demonstrates the helping role and provides informational support to the family. According to Benner, Nurse at the proficient stage feels easier and less stressful when performing certain nursing actions for Mrs. B. For example, monitoring Mrs. B's vital signs and the intracranial pressures and the knowing signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressures. And this intervention are identified as Banner's diagnostic and patient monitoring function domain. And the competencies are detecting and documenting significant changes in patient's condition and assessing the patient's potential for responding for various treatment strategies. Proficient nurse demonstrate increased confidence performing nursing actions when uh, patient's family is at bedside. Moreover, there is much more involvement with the patient and family. The nursing intervention includes encourage Mrs. B's daughter and son participating in Mrs. B's care. For, ex for instance, bed baths and changing clothing. And this intervention is identified as a banner's helping role domain. Besides, the proficient nurse sees the situation as a whole, the, the total picture, and they become more flexible, responsible, and appropriately involved with all team members. That means the nurse is not only taking care of patient's physical needs, but also concerning about patient and the family's psychological and uh, spiritual aspects. The inter nursing intervention includes be physical, present, and available to help Mrs. B's family to determine religious and spiritual choices. And this intervention is identified as Banner's helping role, and the competencies are presents and providing emotional and informational support to patients' families. As an expert, I am no longer relying on analytical principle, such as rule and guidelines to link my understanding of the situation to an appropriate action. With decades of experience, I will use my intuition to grasp a deep understanding of the situation. I perform holistic rather than uh, procedural and based upon incremental steps. As an expert, I will monitor life-threatening signs and symptoms of stroke as a medical emergency. I will recognize the signs of decline neurological status that is related to secondary on medical complications. I will assess Mrs. B's risk of a pressure ulcer. I will continue to assess nutrition and hydration status to prevent the complications of dehydration and malnutrition. I will encourage family members to verbalize their concerns. I will assess and screen family members to learn their burden in regards with the situation and their readiness to learn and participate in the patient's care. Lastly, I will document the comprehensive information from admission to discharge regarding assessment, screening, and prognosis of Mrs. B.